Love exists but with an absence of eternity. At the first moment of a lover's encounter, there's an affirmation of love. Psychologically, lunacy, emptiness, panic, delusion that the moment will last forever. I'm seized by desire. I hide behind my back and postpone all answers. That was the intro narration to K-pop girl group FX's Pink Tape art film, one of the many great creative pieces that the group has contributed to K-pop since their 2009 debut. As an art and design student, I've always felt a strong draw towards FX, in large part due to their experimental approach to art and creative direction. I don't think FX really receive enough credit for how their eclectic visual style helped reshape the colorful and cinematic K-pop aesthetic that is so popular today. Thanks to the detailed artistic visions of creative director Min Hee Jin, who worked at SM Entertainment from 2002 to 2019, FX was always one step ahead of the game. The group was known for employing unconventional creative methods to strike the perfect balance between art and commerce. For their albums, FX and Min Hee Jin designed and executed visual concepts that were incredibly cohesive as well as totally unique. In this video, I will be focusing on two albums in particular, starting with... For FX's second studio album, Pink Tape, Min wanted to create a high teen romance concept inspired by old art films. Let's listen to her speak about her creative process here. Pink Tape is considered a classic by fans in terms of album packaging design, and rightfully so. Its external package is visually striking, designed to look like a hot pink VHS tape to take after the album's title. This cover art, which earned the album a Communication Design Award at the 2014 Red Dot Design Awards, is adorned with many great little details. The front label features the members in a black and white collage with the film genres cult and romance cleverly checkmarked to hint at the album's high teen romance film theme. The title and members' names are typed in an 8-bit, pixelated font that is carried throughout the inner contents of the album. I want to place emphasis on how cool the typography in this album is. I think that this 8-bit font is so wacky, but it totally works in the context of the album and adds another interesting element to the design, feeding into the electro-techno-pop aspect of FX's identity. The outer cover slides off to reveal a CD that mimics the inner tape of a cassette. There is also a photo book filled with lyrics and photographs of the idols. These images are doused in gorgeous colors and moody lighting and designed with poetic subtitles, made to look like greedy film stills that I found reminiscent of Wong Kar Wai's In the Mood for Love and Sofia Coppola's The Virgin Suicides. These photographs have a very freeform vibe to them, successfully capturing the innocence of first love and the angst of teenage girlhood that is central to the album. This quirky packaging reflected FX's uniqueness as a K-pop group as well as the album's art pop track list. Before Pink Tape hit the market, most K-pop albums were encased in plastic jewel cases or folded cardstock, much like the CDs of the Western music industry. Now following in Pink Tape's footsteps, album packaging design has become a hugely important component of K-pop's allure, playing a significant role in the industry's rising physical album sales according to an article by AIGA Ion Design. Eye-catching, sophisticated design creates an immersive experience for fans when they unbox their albums, encouraging them to purchase more in the future. FX was one of the first groups to push the boundaries of album packaging in this way, producing a commercial product that could also be considered a physical piece of art in itself. SM also released an art film to promote Pink Tape prior to the album's release, using behind-the-scenes footage from the jacket shoot. The art film was the first of its kind in the K-pop industry as a sort of music video that focused solely on cultivating a specific mood through abstract artistic imagery. Pink Tape 
에펙스가 되게 아름답게 그러니까 예쁘고 순수하게 찍으면 너무 좋겠다는 라 생각이 있어서 영화학과 학생들이랑 같이 작업을 하게 됐고요. 사실 아트필름 만들면서 멤버들한테도 이런 필름을 만들 거다라고 얘기를 해줬을 때부터 멤버들도 기대가 많았고 뭐 저예산이면서도 되게 크리에이티브할 수 있는 어떤 감각적인 부분들을 굉장히 고려를 많이 해서 작업을 했고요. 그러, 그러다 보니까 스태프들이랑 더 얘기를 많이 하게 되고 고민하게 되고 오히려 또 멤버들한테는 더 쉽게 그리고 더 편하게 촬영에 임해줬으면 좋겠다라는 얘기를 좀 했었고 Due to its small budget, the Pink Tape art film has a strong indie film vibe to it. With a total lack of that glossy and manufactured quality that most K-pop music videos at the time had, the film's cinematography is abstract and grainy, imitating the low-budget 8mm film format and evoking an eerie yet enchanting atmosphere. I love how the video plays with light to heighten the dreamy and cinematic feel of the video, reminding me of the photography of Petra Collins. In another scene, two members are shown kissing through fabric in reference to Rene Magritte's painting, The Lovers 2. As a promotional piece for the album, the film's artsy, ominous vibe really drew viewers in, highlighting the members' individual eccentricities and the group's overall mysterious, glitchy musical flair. The film was something that had never been done before and at first seemed too weird for mainstream K-pop. However, this abstract video style mixed with references to art and film has now been replicated in many newer K-pop music videos. And the general consensus in the art film's YouTube comment section is that FX quote-unquote invented aesthetic. Now K-pop videos are known for being beautiful spectacles brimming with color and symbolism. Most recently, Rosé's art film for her solo debut album R is extremely reminiscent of the Pink Tape art film, especially with the added static noise in the background. And just as the Pink Tape art film referenced The Lovers, BTS's Blood, Sweat, and Tears references Peter Bruegel's Landscape of the Fall of Icarus. And these are just a few examples of videos that contain traces of Pink Tape's impact. FX marked a shift from music videos that solely flaunted idols as commercial products to music videos that play with more experimental directing and cinematography, encouraging the trend of mixing high art into K-pop concepts as a method of storytelling. For their fourth and final album, FX pursued a more mature, yet still very artsy and experimental concept. I'd describe the visual content for Four Walls as very sleek and modern, yet colorful and bold, reflecting the house genre that the group dives into for this album. Four Walls boasts incredibly sophisticated graphic design with creative director Min Hee Jin once again at the helm. As you can see here, the album cover and other promotional graphics for Four Walls are simple and minimalist with a very limited yet bold color scheme. It seems that this was heavily inspired by the material design trend that was getting popular in the UX UI design scene at the time. Again, demonstrating how forward thinking Min was with her FX work, as intentional sparseness was something quite rare in K-pop album design at the time. Material design, a design language developed by Google in 2014, focuses on imitating the physical world in a more subtle and two-dimensional way for the sake of efficiency and functionality, and usually uses a limited color palette. Material design utilizes the Z-axis to add a sense of depth and also makes use of responsive animations and transitions. These specific features can be seen in the design of Four Walls, which combines material design's philosophy with Min Hee Jin's personal affinity for collage. On the album's cover, each member's profile is attached to a wall illustrated using the X, Y, and Z axes. The Four Walls logos are geometric and chic, showing these four walls either in a box or coming together to form a room. These design choices send the message that each member of FX is a pillar and that they all support each other with their individual talents. Additionally, promo posters like these used animation to make the visuals even more impactful and tech savvy. The album design for Four Walls received an IF Design Award for packaging in 2016. To build even more hype for the album, SM made the unconventional choice to hold an exhibit at a gallery in the Itaewon district of Seoul, where members of the public could come and visit. Each day leading up to the comeback, a new teaser focusing on one member would be premiered at the exhibit, projected onto the walls of the gallery which could be seen from the street through the glass window of the establishment. The colorful projections displayed dreamy footage of the members during their album photo book shoot for Four Walls, similar to how the pink tape art film employed behind the scenes photo shoot Footage. The exhibition was an exciting way for fans to truly immerse themselves into the world of FX, while the very public nature of the installation could also intrigue passerby who wouldn't otherwise follow the group. 
there was a lot of press coverage of the exhibition, which worked to generate even more buzz for the comeback. The photos for this album, many of which were displayed at the aforementioned exhibition, presented a very sleek and vibrant image of the girls with an air of maturity and some groovy retro influence. Some of these images have a strong pop art aura, pairing complementary colors with each other to create images that really stand out. And of course, the music video is beautiful. It seems to follow an Alice in Wonderland type of story in which the members of FX physically escape the four walls of the house into a lush green forest where they encounter odd and mystical happenings. This can be seen as a metaphor for the group as a whole, conveying how they refuse to box themselves into one artistic category and instead constantly evolve through exploring different realms of creativity. There is absolutely no choreography in this music video, a rarity for a K-pop title single, to really hone in on visual storytelling. And while the lack of choreography in the music video may have been disappointing for some fans, I feel that it makes sense in the context of the video and really goes to show how FX were truly risk takers in K-pop. Even the stage performances for Four Walls were visually impressive. I loved that the members' outfits were perfectly color coordinated, yet still completely unique from each other. Flowy sleeves and high-waisted bell-bottom pants paired with the choreography created beautiful, fluid moments on stage and was also a bit reminiscent of disco, once again showcasing FX's retro influences. I think it's so interesting to see that though Pink Tape and Four Walls are very different in style, they still seem to share the same FX experimental flair. I love how Min Hee Jin used her knowledge and appreciation for art, design, and film to produce unique visual content that amplified FX's distinctive identity, and how she was willing to explore mediums not commonly used in K-pop such as with a Pink Tape art film or the Four Walls installation. When I look at Pink Tape and Four Walls, I'm always so impressed by how current they feel, like these albums and music videos could be released today and still achieve success and relevancy. With a discography rich in avant-garde visuals referencing art and cinema, FX are one of the most unique and innovative groups in K-pop, and they should be recognized more often as so.